okay good morning students so today from now we will be discussing about the geotechnical engineering experiments okay so the most important exp, uh, like experiments that we are doing in geotechnical engineering deals with the property of the soil okay so before doing any experiment i assume that you have a basic idea of what are the basic properties of the soil okay so generally the soil has two type of two type of properties one we have index properties and second we have engineering properties right so index properties means these are the indicative behavior right index means you can see index for any book or index for any uh, notebook the index itself indicates there is like the whole content of the book right similarly indicative behavior of the soil also it indicates something about the soil okay while seeing some index property like uh, specific gravity like density or unit weight and we have atabag limits atabag limits okay and all these properties index properties void ratio porosity air content percentage of air void all this comes as a part of index properties this property shows something about that particular soil okay if you take specific gravity it represents the denseness of the material a denseness how dense your soil is okay and density of course it it will gives the density and in terms of strength if the soil is having high dry density it indicates the strength the bearing capacity or the load carrying capacity of the soil will be more okay that is the indicative behavior of that particular soil sample right and in engineering properties we have several engineering properties like permeability effective stress we have you have unconfined compressive strength we have cbr test cbr strength of the soil and we have ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and allow or also allowable bearing capacity of the soil okay so these are all the properties index and engineering properties okay and the most important thing that we are going to discuss today is is grain size distribution grain size distribution by sieve analysis grain size distribution by sieve analysis right so grain size distribution means grain size distribution means we are separating the soil depending upon its particle particle size right so basically there are different different types of soils that are present uh, on around the globe right so we should be following some standard in order to classify any type of soil okay so uh, as in india we will we will follow in is soil classification iscs we call it as iscs okay as per iscs basically a soil is classified into two types generally okay first we have coarse grain and then we have fine grain soils okay so coarse and fine are separated with respect to particle size only okay so the standard or the boundary that we take in order to classify it as coarse or fine grain is 75 microns okay so when we are sieving through 75 microns okay if more than 50 percentage of the soil that which we have taken is passing through 75 micron then we call it as fine grain passing is fine grain if more than 50 percent is retained on that 75 micron sieve only then we call it as coarse grain soil okay again in coarse grain we have two types of soils right we have gravel and we have sand okay so similarly similarly as we have classified you know coarse and fine with respect to 75 micron as a boundary here we take 4.75 mm as a boundary and we will classify more than 50 percent is of the foil soil passing more than 50 percent is of the soil passing 4.75 mm sieve is classified as sand and retaining more than 50 percent on 4.75 is classified as gravel right again in gravel we have three types of soils okay it is well graded gravel we have poorly graded gravel and we have uniformly graded gravel right so i'll explain what is how do you classify well graded as poorly graded and uniformly graded okay and similarly for sand also we have poorly graded sand well graded sand and uniformly graded sand right so we'll classify as poorly well graded and uniformly by taking the values of cu and cc cu and cc we'll take the help of cu and cc and we'll classify whether it is well graded gravel or well graded uh, sorry poorly graded gravel or uniformly graded gravel similarly sp sw and uniformly graded sand okay this is the old classification of coarse grain soil right so now we come to the fine grain soils 
fine grain soils there are two types of soils again clay and silt right so clay means the particle size is less than 2 micron silt means the particle size is in between 2 microns to 75 micron okay so i'll show you the 75 micron sieve see this is the 75 micron sieve okay this is 75 micron sieve you can see the uh, particle size i mean i mean you can see the gap between each particle okay this is i mean uh, the particle size is 75 micron here you can see 75 micron is the particle size is very 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 less okay you this is 75 micron you consider seeing 2 micron it will be very 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 less okay it is highly impossible for a soil to pass through 2 micron okay so what i am going to say is it is physically not not possible to classify on its particle size like you can see when say uh, it is clay or silt okay so then mr utterberg has come utterberg has come and he has classified fine grain soils depending upon utterberg limits okay those utterberg limits are liquid limit plastic limit and shrinkage limit okay we will take help of this utterberg limits and will classify whether it is silt or clay right so this is the like overview classification of uh, soils okay so again there were few of the points that had to be added and i will explain uh, once we are dealing with particularly when we are classing with classifying gravel sand silt and clay right thank you so we have seen the importance of grain size analysis okay so now we will perform the test okay so before performing the test we'll see what are the apparatus that are required for performing the performing this test okay so the first and important parameter apparatus that are uh, you no know, sieve sizes okay so there are different sieve sizes mentioned here okay i have placed the sieves with respect to their sizes okay in a chronological order so i have placed first 4.75 and then 2.36 and 1.18 and then i have placed 600 300 micron 150 micron 75 micron and don't forget to add pan at the bottom right so so this is a typical placement and i have taken the soil which is oven dried for 24 hours okay and you should ensure that it, should, it is a dry soil okay it should be dried at least for 24 hours okay and it is it should be free from any organic matter and it should not be containing large pebble size particles okay so i'll pour the soil here i'll pour the soil on the top of the on the top sieve that is 4.75 okay okay you should make sure 4.75 and 75 micron are present for must and should okay so because that is the, the those are the standards which we are classifying for uh, coarse or fine and in order to classify again gravel and sand we have we are using 4.75 and 75 micron so we should must ensure that 4.75 and 75 micron are present at any cost right so after placing we can we have to sieve this soil sample we can sieve by means of two methods okay we can shoe mechanical sieving or we can do physically okay when there is no mechanical sieve we have to go for like physical sieving okay we have a mechanical sieve here and we'll place the soil sample on the sieve and we'll place this uh, we'll uh, sieve the soil sample shake the soil sample for 15 minutes and then after we will collect the soil sample from each particular size each particular sieve and we will note the readings and with respect to that readings we will calculate the next procedure right yeah. so we have the mechanical sieve here okay so it is coming automatically with an uh, motor okay it will save automatic it will sieve automatically okay so i'm noting the time and i'm starting the machine So we have take we have taken the soil after sieving okay so here we can see uh, this is 4.75 mm sieve and these are the particle sizes that are retained on 4.75 it means these particle sizes are more in particle size than 4.75 because it is retained mean it indicates the particle size of this soil particles is more than 4.75 okay so we will take the weight of individual particle sizes that are retained on each size okay
okay so it is around 144 grams i am taking the readings now 144 grams similarly for all the sieves we have to note the weight of the soil sample that is retained after 15 minutes of sieving okay this is 224 grams okay okay 269 grams One hundred and forty five grams, one not nine grams, next sixty six grams. Next, okay, this is around twenty nine grams. Around twenty nine grams, and on pan, so it was showing around ten grams. Okay. Yeah. So we have noted all the readings, and we'll now we'll proceed with the calculation part. Okay. So we have noted all the values here. We have noted the amount of soil that is retaining on each individual size. Okay. Uh, you see here we have on 4.75 the amount of soil retaining is 144 grams, and similarly up to 75. Uh, 75 micron we have noted down all the values and we have taken the cumulative value okay so cumulative value means we need to add uh, like to the above value we need to add right so you see here 144 grams is retained on 4.75 when we are calculating the cumulative value for 2.36 we need to add 144 plus the soil that is retained on 2.36 so that will give 3.6 368 grams okay similarly we have to add all the all the values and finally we will get 1000 grams we will get and we should get 1000 grams because the soil that we have taken for this experiment is 1000 grams okay so it indicates that there is no soil that is missing out right missing out right so and then we have to convert this cumulative mass into the percentage of soil how do we convert this into percentage the total amount of soil that we have taken is 1000 grams and the total soil that is retained on 4.75 is 144 so it will give the percentage that is nearly 14.4 percentage similarly we have to convert everything every value into the percentage and we have we have written this right <clears throat> and next next important parameter is percentage of finer how do we get by percentage of finer is we have to subtract Uh, this percentage of soil that is retained minus 100 percentage. You take here, uh, it is 14.4 percentage that is retaining on 4.75. If you subtract 14.4 from 100 percentage, we will get 80.65 percentage. Similarly, we will subtract from the each individual size to get the percentage of finer of that particular sieve. Okay. So, what does that percentage of finer indicates? Okay. It indicates that 80 by 85.6 percentage of the soil that which we have taken for you know uh, this experiment is passing through 4.75 mm okay this is the data that we need to extract this is the so we have calculated percentage of finer okay so we will plot the diagram we will plot the graph okay we will take semi log graph because the particle size are very very small so we are taking semi log graph to get a proper good results right so we have taken semi log graph on semi log graph on x axis we have noted particle size in mm and on y axis we have taken the percentage of finer that which we have calculated just now okay so we will plot all the values here okay and we will join all the points okay and we will get some the graph something like this okay so with respect to this graph and with respect to the with respect to this graph we will take 
d30 values d10 values and d60 values right so d30 means d30 means 30 percentage of the finer particles are finer than that particular size basically d30 is a size which indicates 30 percentage of the particles 30 percentage of the particles are finer than this particular d30 size right so through that we will get d10 value d30 and d60 d10 d30 and d60 we have noted the values d10 20 sorry d30 and d60 now we will cat now we will calculate cu and cc values right so cc values we have the formula for cc d30 square by d30 d60 into d10 and for cu we have d60 by d10 so using these values we will calculate cc value and cu values cc is coefficient of curvature and C cu is coefficient of uniformity okay in order to tell it is well graded gravel or sand we the cc value should be in between 1 to 3 and the cu value should be greater than 4 for gravel and cu should be greater than 6 for sand okay so we'll see the soil we have taken is coarse grain soil we know that right so we have to confirm whether it is sand or gravel okay so you see here on 4.75 more than 50 percentage of the particle is passing right 85.6 means it is more than 50 percentage so it clearly indicates the soil which we have taken is a sand okay again in sand we have to tell it is well graded sand or poorly graded, graded sand or uniformly graded sand okay so when we are collab like uh, when we are comparing with the cu and cc values we came to know that the soil which you have taken is poorly graded soil because the cc value should be one in between one to three but we got 0 0.7471 and cu value should be more than six and it is satisfying C cu is satisfying but cc is not satisfying in order to tell it is well graded it should satisfy both the values it is not meeting both the values so that is why we classify the soil that is taken as poorly graded sand okay thank you